Okay, let's go ahead and resume. Where we had left off was we had gone through, we had penalized that form, we had created an evaluation function that was going to go through and give us an insulation value for each of those different panels, and we are so, so close. We just need to sort of look at the values that are returning and do a little uh, cleaning up on them. I think that our old function generally works pretty well, but it was originally designed to work for a single panel. Now we've got a bunch of panels. So we just have to make sure that when we're doing our averaging and all that type stuff that we kind of just handle each panel independently. Essentially what we want to do is I'm going to get a whole grid of values for each of the different panels. So what I want to do is not really do an overall average across all the values on all the panels. What I want to do is take each panel one at a time and get the average for each panel. Okay. And that's going to involve, you'll see a little list mapping. But it's the other classic use for list maps, and it's a really good one. So here's basically the story today. If I go back and I say the average cumulative insulation values, and I watch that, just so you can sort of see it, let's take a look at what's actually happening here. I got a whole bunch of values here, but let's take a look at the hierarchy and what's going on here. Looks like they're all sort of in the 37 range, but if I kind of roll back on the list and try to look at the hierarchy, see if you can figure out what's going on. Bunch of them in there. There's really just one list, but in the list, there are actually, if I go zip it on down, I think you'll see, Twenty-four different little sets of points. The reason there's twenty-four different little sets of points is I have six by four panels, so I have each of those little sets of points is the insulation values reported back for that one panel. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to just do a little operating on it and go through and kind of compute the averages for each of the panels and pull them all together. What I'm going to do is actually pull it back in. I'm going to do it inside the app node. Let's see if we can figure out what to do. If I want to get back 24 values, not 24 different grids of values, okay, here's what I can do. I'll open that node and edit, and let's take a look. So it looks like we're doing pretty good. In terms of the solar analysis seems to be working. I go zipping on over to kind of pull it back out so I can make that a little easier to see. Now pull those over. So what did I do? I went through and just said that I was going to flatten that. Okay, and basically do the math average and do the average cumulative insulation values. That's actually the raw values over there. So even in this list over here, if I go looking at this list, I think there's a single list. And, oh, this is interesting, what's in there? Okay, there's basically 24, and inside the 24, there are basically a bunch of grid values for how the grid got divided in there. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape, but we need to sort of clean this up a little bit. I'll tell you what's going on. At a high level, we have one list, and then at this level, we go through and we have like all the different values for, so I can figure this out again, each panel. So we need to do sort of a little mucking around in terms of the, the hierarchy to this list. What I want to do is, to start with, I want to go through and just flatten out one level. So what I really want to do is treat each of these different subgroupings. So again, if I can figure it out. At the second level, there's all 24 panels. And then within there, there's a subgrid. So what I really want to do is, I want to pull all the second level things up to the first level, so they're really, that's the individual panels. 
This is the list of all the panels. These are the individual panels, and underneath that is the grids within the panels. So I want to pull up one level. That will give me the list of the individual panels. And then for each individual panel, what I want to do is flatten all the ones inside there and compute the average. Okay? So this is involved just a little bit of list manipulation, but let's kind of see if we can make it work. Some of this is still going to be here. I just need to go through and uh, put a few steps in between. So I want to, again, can you see that I have a higher level list and then the list of the 24 panels is underneath it? Okay, and if that's the case, what I want to start by doing is do a list flatten, and I'll take out one level. Beautiful. Okay, so now, if I watch that, I should be getting like uh, just a list of 24 things in there. Now, within each of those, notice what actually happens. Within each of those different panels, I got a whole bunch of different values for all the grids. So you see, looks like I have 10 rows and six columns or something like that. That's just based on the grid spacing. That's not really based on our kind of panelization. So just based on the grid spacing, it's spaced all those out. What I'd like to do is take each and every one of these lists, the zero list, the one list, the two list, and basically flatten all those things together within that list. So here's how you do something like that. If, for example, I said list get first item, it would get this one. It would get that list of 10 sublists. It would graph them all together. If I said list get item at index second one, it would get this one. List to get item at index three, it would get that one. But I want to do that for each and every one of those lists. So this is where list graph gets used in the other way, in the other classic sense. If you have a whole list of items and you want to do the same exact thing to every item okay, in that list, you go ahead and use a list map. So let's go ahead, I'll do this. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to uh, run this just so you can sort of make sure that the flatten list is doing the right thing. And we'll set up a little list map to do the, uh, what, actually collapsing that and reading them one at a time. So let us see. Run, run, run. Okay, let's go back and take a look. So I've got these guys. Let's see what the flatten list looks like. Oh, oh I, I forgot the watch. Darn me. This should give us back a list of 24 items, or 24 sublists that have a, a bunch of points within there. And really what we want to do is just flatten all the points within there. Okay, not so bad. Let's take a look. So I went from a list of 24 items, or a list of a list, just to 24 items in the list. So. This list is a little bit better. Notice it has, it has one less layer of hierarchy to it. Okay, but this list looks pretty good. This list has the 24 different items, so each of these I can operate on the way I want to. And here's what I want to do to each of those items in that list. I would basically like to go through and flatten them. The screen just popped. Thank you. Nice. Just at the critical moment when the murder is about to be revealed, you get the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got the 24 lists, and here's what I'd like to do. If I was item zero, what I would like to do is take all the different items in zero and just flatten those all out so I can merge them. So here's what I'm going to do. 
If I just said flatten the way I have been flattening in the past, it's going to flatten the entire list. If I want to flatten them panel-wise, flatten them within each individual panel, what I do is I feed it using a list map. Okay, what is list map do? It lets you take a list, and for every item in the list, it'll apply a function, like flattening it. Okay, so what that's going to do is just panelize every item. Item 0 will flatten, item 1 will flatten, item 2 will flatten. Okay, and then with those flattened lists, I can go through and basically compute the average of each of those flattened lists. So the tail end of this operation, I have to, of course, take the flatten off of there because I want it to be fed one item at a time. Let me say that again because I just did that really quickly and it's kind of confusing. As opposed to flattening these, I'm going to leave that function open so the list map has an open function and then it'll flatten that list one at a time. So let's go ahead and just kind of check this out. I'll put some more watches in here just so we get the value for our run. Let's look at the uh, map ones. I'll look at the averages. How come it doesn't flatten the highest hierarchy in that list? Because it's only flattening, it's only being given one item at a time to work with. So what it's doing is, it's basically being given all the things under zero, okay, which is like there's like 24 of them or something like that in there. There's all actually, what is it? No, there's, 10 of them by, so there's 11 by seven. There's 77 points in each panel, okay, based on the grid spacing. So it's basically being fed 77 points and flattening out oh, those okay. so 77 the first, points. The first list is the, the list of panels, though. I'm saying the yes. highest hierarchy is, okay. Yes, so, and the only reason we had to go ahead and flatten it out was what it was doing before yeah, there's an extra level of hierarchy to it. That's the panel. This is a list of panels. So we had to basically just basically remove one of the layers of the uh, kind of hierarchy out of it. Oh, so the first button, that's what that did. Yep. It was just promoting everything to the higher level. OK, let us run this and see how this goes. We'll say, let's go to that list map or the main one. We will go through and run this. What this should do is go through and give us the average panel by panel. So again, realize we're using list map in two different ways. We're using it to sort of test a bunch of input parameters that are a list. We're also using it to just take a list of items and operate on them one at a time. Yeah. That's why list map is this incredibly useful thing because nothing else I think you sort of figure out. We spend a lot of time worrying about lists in Dynamo. It's all just about whether you're at the right order, or the right level of hierarchy. It's definitely very, you know, kind of list management centric. <clears throat> is the goal of this to map a bunch of colors to all the panels based on their Yes. Okay. Yes. You well, can also do it. The, you put polygons, you could also do this by placing adaptive components and then analyzing them. Could you do that? The adaptive components, okay, what you need is a surface. So what you have to do is get the surface off of the adaptive component. Okay. okay. So I did it by going after and grabbing the quads. You just the quads. You yeah. get a bunch of quads. But I think, who did it the other way? Amir, did you find something? Was there like element.surface? Someone else, see if you can find element.surface, because that ought to be also give you a list of surfaces. And in either case, it would feed a list of surfaces in, because it wants surfaces. But I think someone yeah, ran into it that way. Trying to do that before. Surface that element. Actually, I want the opposite. I want element.surface. Okay. So when this all runs, we basically now have a list of 24 different flattened lists. 
What's in this 24 flat list you can see is actually, it is just the 24 which are gridded, but they're all just sort of flattened into groups, so all 77 are together, and then we're averaging them. So each subgroup we're averaging, and you can start to see that panel zero has an average of 69, panel 10 has an average of 441. Yeah, it's, we have different averages, so super. These are the insulation values that we want to use. So in a, you know, just like directness values are scaled between zero and one, here we have a large range of values. And what we do now with those is just scale them some way so that they match our like color notion. And we can go through and use them to colorize the panels. So if I come back out, and I say, let's grab those cumulative insulation values. Now that doesn't look right. So what I did. Average cumulative insulation, there should be 24 values. Save that. Something's not, it is not reading right. Because that should be there, and there should be 24 values in the list. Is it because it's somehow collecting the other outputs, like cumulative yeah, values? Yeah, it, look, it looks like I'm getting the wrong output. Let's see again, and we can figure out why this is. It's definitely returning the wrong thing, but let's see if we can figure out why. Let me write it again. I deleted the other outputs and only ran, ran average cumulative insulation, and it returned null. So um, in 4B. So what's coming as the output in 4B definitely is an average cumulative, yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and if it's messed up and a little confused, Let's just remove that outlet output. I think you're onto a good strategy. I'll remove that one. I think it gets confused when I keep on reusing nodes and stuff like that. Let me go through and put an output on this. Watch that. I'll say average insulation for each panel. Save that away. Come back over here. Let's watch that. So it looks like the surface is still there too. Let it finish. When it returns some values, after we finally get to there, no, I don't like that no at all. Let's go back and see. That is very strange. At this point, I would say that it's just being inconsistent in terms of what's going on. That you know, somehow the values are returning to here when law changes aren't coming out there. So, you know, that's just sort of an inconsistency in Dynamo. Yeah. Uh, 
And then it did? Great. Let me go through and do that. So. Do I still have service? Is it hiding from me? Over there? I <laughs> see. Oh, that's even an empty output. That looks that looks like you're just asking for trouble. Okay. Where, where does that con where should that connect to? It should connect from pink, right? It Actually, if the surface, if we were passing the surfaces back out, it really we would just pass it right back out from here. We would just say the same surface came out because okay. the surface isn't a result. It's just what we passed in. Okay. Oh, so no need for that call. Yeah, that I think that was just sort of a leftover from when we were doing it before. Okay. Very good call, Brit. Let's see if this works. Oops. Of course, I should have watched that. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, on the outer level, I don't have to watch. There, I can just I can expose. Oh, at least it looks like it did something. Okay, so this actually has. Woohoo! Okay. Twenty-four beautiful values that we can now use to go through and map against um, some sort of color scheme. So, as you look at these values, they're kind of hanging around over here. We've done a number of different things. Sometimes people say, let's pick the highest, and we'll map every item <coughs> against, divide everything versus the highest, and sort of get a percentage of the highest. And that's actually a perfectly reasonable way to do it. Another way to do this is just to go through and map them from 0 to 1. Now, think about the difference, though, you will get. The highest value on this is probably looks like it's around 74, something like that, or 749. Is anything higher? I think 749 is about the highest. Okay. The lowest looks like it's sort of 362 or thereabouts. Okay. So if I do it as a percentage, okay, I'm going to get numbers basically in the values from 50% to 100%, which actually is probably a truer notion of what's going on. If you do the other thing, and this is what always happens with chart junk in the USA Today graphs and stuff like that, if we just map from the lowest to the highest values here and spread those, the lows almost look inordinately low just because they were down near zero as opposed to being near 50%, but it spreads the range a little bit broader if you want to really see a very dramatic difference. So the two ways you might approach this are, again, either I can say, great, let's, let's max it, And then I will basically say n divided by maximum value of n. So I'll take those, and I'll take the maxes. And that'll give me a range from 0 to 1, or 0.5 to 1, something like that. And that's probably the truest way to do it. The other way would be just math.remap range. So I can take all those numbers in and go anywhere from 0 to 1. You know where else work. Let's watch that. You can see how you feel about both of these different ways of doing it. Okay, so I'm either going to look at this as being somewhere between like 10%, 11%, all the way up to 100%, or I'm going to look at it as being, put them side by side. At the high end, it's actually not all that different. At the low end is where it gets really sort of different. So, you know, you can just really decide how you sort of feel about it, whether you want to be scaled all the way from zero up or whether you want to be scaled from 50% up. Because, what is it, you know, value 11 is 51, value 11 here is 0.56. What's this? 8 is 0, 8 is 0 0.098. That's a really bad one. Okay, so there's one that's really kind of very hidden in there. So just, it really depends on which color you want. But with these values, 
these fantastic values, which are, if you think about it, just replacing your solar directness values. So for everyone who has your solar directness function hanging around somewhere and you're mapping based on that, just pull off solar direction, uh, directness, pull this in instead, and use this to map the colors. You can also use it to resize the panel openings if you want to. So it's really just two different ways of doing it. But if we're going to use a function to go through and do all the solar insulation panel by panel, it's a little bit of work to do it. It's definitely more accurate, but it's a little bit of work, which is why just doing the vector dot products is actually a pretty good approximation for what you're doing. Yeah, I think vector dot products, especially if you're trying to, well, I'm trying to think about it. If you're just really trying to get very quick feedback about comparative options, it's a pretty good way to do it. The only thing that you're really missing is the nuance is other surfaces that might be shading it or the differences as you aggregate all the values across the entire year. But for an individual point in time, it's actually pretty good. You can probably pick a few key points in time and use that as a, as a metric for doing it. Okay. So let's pause on this one. Let's see if it, yeah. Do a reality check in terms of whether it makes sense. Sort of connecting? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Okay, so. That is really a whole lot of, uh, well, just looking at this. Actually, let's just go ahead and we'll finish there today because really, we only have a couple minutes left. And so we're just going to play around with some other variations on list maps next. What we're going to do next to the list maps is we'll say, great, let's go ahead and bring a single value. Let's do multiple values, try different those things and compare list mapping versus some other strategies. But maybe relative to where most people are in finishing up things, this is a good place to leave it for today. And we will pick up with our comparative search strategy stuff on uh, Tuesday instead. Okay. Let us then adjourn for today. We'll hang around a little bit and answer questions as best we can.